Ellie Privet. I'm Peter Ostrasser. Disrupt Education. What an episode last week. Wow. Right. I mean, for for someone who wrote a book called Answering Why, I feel like I've been considering my why, <laughs> which is good. Um, Mark Perna did a great job getting us to, I, I think his gifts and talents are around like getting you to reflect on questions that you don't think are important when you're in like the day-to-day grind but if you don't stop and like reflect then you don't really understand why you're doing what you're doing and his whole point just to dive right into it because that's where I'm that's where I'm at mentally is is that's what the generations at the forefront gen z and gen alpha are basically demanding like you can't start with what how where you know you have to start with why they have to have purpose like or if some reason like not just mm, to go to college mm, because i told you so mm, it's got to be bigger than that and i think that's a really powerful way to start and for all of those because i was one of them in schools it was all like oh, you know, relationships and like, you know, you got to build all these things first. And as a chemistry teacher, I'm like, content, content, you know, I Mm -hmm. I definitely did that. But when I think back to what really was the game changer for students, it was connecting their interest, Mm -hmm. their background to the curriculum that gave them a bigger why for why they're learning it. That's when they always dialed in. So I should have Right. And like hindsight's 2020, had I even started that earlier, think of how much more I could have moved the needle forward Mm -hmm. with students. And um, and so I was always like kind of like, that's too touchy feely, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't really help kids. But now I'm like, it it really does. (laughs) (laughs) All patients, that's what connects people. Yeah. He was spot on on so many different things. There were so many nuggets that he dropped. Um, Obviously, we'll highlight a few of them here. Um, and kind of like pull them into my, our stories. I mean, uh, one, of one of the stories that, you know, the, the personal, uh, connection and inspiring students, I go back to coming out of the pandemic 2021, I was teaching in a school and I was in a career planning course. Um, and I remember there was a young lady who sat right up front in the course, um, and you know, some kids were like masked and some weren't, and it was just a mess or whatever. And every, every day I, I attempted to start with a, a quote or an inspiring message and it was first period. So, you know, kids were tired, et cetera. Um, and I remember when we all the way through the, um, the time that we were starting to get back into the class, like the kids were not all into it. And this young lady was never really into it. And her grade wasn't the best. She didn't do a lot of the work yet at the end of the semester, Ali, I got the sweetest note from this young lady just saying, thank you. Every day you inspired me. Um, and, and, and it really kind of drove me to do things and, uh, to better myself and she wasn't performing in the class, but exactly what Mark Perna was saying there, it was just like a humbling experience to hear him say that because, you know, that is a, it was a personal thing where I don't, you know, where this young lady went, obviously we're coming out of a, a pandemic at the time. Um, she had hope and, you know, that kind of, attributed to maybe some confidence um, that is a part of something that students need um, and they want. Um, so, man, he hit that. That was the, the, that young lady was somebody I was thinking about a lot through that last podcast. Hmm. I, it's, it is interesting to think about the, you know, like what stories come up when we have guests and, and just over our experience as educators in different, in different ways i think for me one of them that i was thinking about was you know he he mentioned regularly you know the the, just because you're good at school doesn't 
I mean you should necessarily like do more school and some of the stats he shared like you need to listen to them maybe at like 0.5 speed to get mm -hmm. <laughs> like everything you can out of them but I I I'm thinking back to a, a student I had that I mean incredibly gifted smart student um the but if you looked on paper would not would not think that mm -hmm. and um and it, it, the way he would connect all of his learning and just he could just brain map it um but just didn't enjoy doing homework didn't enjoy you know studying for test court like the the traditional ways that show success and but then he went in his junior and senior year he got into like kind of the tech program that they had which just half days and just flourished he was all like hands-on he would be so proud to like bring like look at this that i made and and <laughs> relate to like the chemistry lab that we're doing like with metallurgy and and covalent bonding he was just like oh my gosh like this stuff in the automotive stuff connects to this and you're like he he could be this brilliant like nasa engineer he, just the way his mind works but on paper if you just looked at him on paper you would never think that yeah he was like the one of the most engaged students mm -hmm. again but mm -hmm. if you walked into the door and you saw his like you know how he would sit and everything kind of like the student you're talking about like they have great poker faces you wouldn't necessarily know that about him but unless you had a relationship and like conversations, I mean, he would just animate one on one and be so lively and he would email me behind the scenes. It's like really like pulling back the curtain. A lot of peers have uh, high schoolers, you know, have like the peer front that they don't want to act a certain way or, or whatnot, um, or they engage in different ways. But to Mark's point about like, you know, those top performers might be on paper your 1.5 to 2.5 gpas and it's really a message that i think employers and higher ed institutions need to hear because they can drive that change at the next level if mm -hmm. they're willing to so i there's like a huge opportunity for that message to for those people like the grades we've already thought like they don't mean much but it's like, how do people engage with you and whatnot? Like, we need better ways to account for that edu education because he, his, the messaging that he probably got a lot in high school is that he's not enough. He's not good enough. You know, he's, mm -hmm. he needs to do better. And I'm sure wherever he's at, I, I, I really need to go reconnect with him <laughs> after this. Um, Cam, if you're listening. <laughs> uh I, i'm sure he's wildly successful so he has all these other skills and i'm sure like when he found his purpose and wherever he's driven like he'll just reach the top but i i think that we're hearing more and more of those stories and from someone coming from mark who sees these communities and kids all the time i think it's powerful to recognize that you can't look at kids you talk about this all the time like what what the letters and numbers on paper are saying because it's just right. inaccurate i and i also reflect you you were talking a little bit into the post-secondary you know opportunities and such and it's funny because you know my wife and i have conversations you know about her son um and you know a little personal info here but like you know he's he's going for his associates and um it bothers some parents and not others I'll keep it yeah. there. Um, but um, and, and it's good. It's good dialogue to have, honestly. But um, and I, it's it's the old adage. Well, if he doesn't go get a four year now, he'll he'll never go back. But in the same conversation, I was like, I went back like I was in class with 22 year olds when I was 29. Like I had to go back to get a teaching certificate and I had to go, you know, and, and do these mm -hmm. things. So that's not really true now. Not always, maybe, maybe some people don't go back. Um, but what I liked about how that kind of goes with our last uh, week's guest, Mark, is, you know, colleges need to hear that. Like he, he was talking about him closing up shop um, because 
uh, I still believe this as well. They're constantly marketing towards the 18 year old or 16 year old. My daughter, who is a soft uh, junior in high school, um, gets a new piece of mail from a university that I've never heard of every day. And it's almost, it looks, and she gets it. She's like, they look desperate. Like, you know, and I think this generation, just like Mark was saying, you know, am I going to pick a school if I go to college? Is that school still going to be there in two years? That's one. And number two, wow. the cost, right? Is that uh, is that worth it? Um, and I, I, I mean, there was a nugget there. So if you're post-secondary and, and you're in education and you're struggling to keep, uh, um, you know, applications coming in, maybe it's time to pivot your market. Right. Um, and I know, look, I know there's a lot of different things and it doesn't seem that easy, but to Mark's point, like it's common sense. Like if if this market isn't buying your product anymore and this market needs your product or or, or is coming back, quote unquote, older people, Gen Xers and maybe millennials now coming back and getting uh, degrees. Look, that's I think that's a legitimate look in education. Um and also, you know, understanding this generation is something that there is a gap, definitely in public education, but also in second post-secondary education as well. I can see why his message resonates with um, communities across the nation of like, we're, we're starting at the wrong point. Like, you can give kids all this information, but if you don't like, light a fire inside of them they have nowhere to to put it or anchor it or care and that's what they as a whole mm -hmm. have a lot of stake in like why am i here how is it relevant you know and if you it doesn't take much to find relevance right mm -hmm. i mean if you just have a conversation get to know someone i'm certain that whatever you're teaching on is hopefully relevant to their life and if it's not then maybe that like is a bigger conversation but i mean for me with chemistry it was always super easy and i'm sure in business it was super easy to find something that they mm -hmm. liked to do and just bring it and their eyes would light up like wait what uh that that's what that means or that's i never knew that and you know i think to mark's point you know people can call the generation see whatever they want but um they just they want a relationship first mm -hmm. and there's so much opportunity there uh like i said what i remember all of these like community building activities being thrust upon me as a new teacher and like i think i'm part of that that group i know he in his messaging in his book, he does talk about millennials and Gen Z. Now he like mm -hmm. pretty much talks to Gen Z, but I would always question some of those strategies. Be like, well, why? And now I'm like, oh, well, I needed Mark to like there to to have someone tell them like you really need to explain like why this is important, how mm -hmm. this helps students to get me to buy into those strategies, right? Like I wasn't somebody that just okay, you you gave me this resource, I'm going to use it if mm -hmm. I didn't understand why. So a lot of what he was saying was really resonating with me because while I don't think I'm as extreme as <laughs> Gen Z in certain areas, there is a lot of what he's saying that I'm like, yeah, no, I, I definitely resonate with, I want to be understood and I definitely want to know why we're doing something mm -hmm. before I like, dig into it further um so it, it, gen z just might be a little bit more uh maybe a they're not going to tell you that's what they want right versus maybe millennials are like that's what i want and before mm -hmm. they'll like you you kind of give it to them so yeah that it's interesting how his messaging was like a lot i think a lot of educators listening to this podcast are gonna are gonna see a mirror and be like oh my gosh this this makes so much sense mm -hmm. like why mm -hmm. i why i'm why i'm not open to this idea because right. i never understood why yes i mean uh I, again reflecting just as as you're even speaking to why and and 
you know, the purpose behind things, um, you know, Gen Z standing on principle is what Mark said. Um, it was about the, the, the real big piece of it was I always ask students, if, if you don't know why we're doing something in class, challenge me, just throw it out at me. Right. I, I will not get upset. And if, by the way, if I can't answer why we're doing something, I'm I'm going to cease doing it. I mean, I am not. And like he said, I I just I it it hit deep when Mark said these kids are bored and they feel like their their time is being wasted. And as a teacher, I think we know what wasting time feels like. Mm -hmm. And so I think building through a culture of really okay. And this is what I mean, this goes so deep, Ali, like in, in the paradigm shift of education, like so as a leader in education, take a look at the things like look at your system, look at the things you're making people do. Um, if you're a, a lawmaker um, and he said it himself, they're just shoving so much stuff to make this difficult. But we can also now that we can realize that this stuff is happening how far up can we go and, and really like eliminate some of this stuff, right? I realize there's there's money tied to it and there's all these, these things you can't control. But man, like what can you control? Not only just within your classroom, but within your school, within your community that is not tied to one of these crazy initiatives, but you might be doing something that is wasting time because guess what obviously millennials are coming into the education world as educators not many <laughs> and definitely not many gen z um man i think they're going to revolutionize education even further to be honest because once they get into the area of becoming decision makers and leaders of this world um there i don't think many of them are going to put up with the stuff that has been set up in the past. That excites me. That excites me a lot. So, um, you know, th th that's what I was thinking when you were, when you were saying, you know, the why, like, why are we doing this? Um, I think if you're an educator right now, if, if you're teaching something that has no meaning, um, forget about it, have fun with it, create relationships in the classroom. If you're going to stay there, I don't know. <laughs> There's so much opportunity. I mean, every every guest that we've had for the last six weeks, two months, has yeah. been sharing these like seemingly like granular disruptions. Mm -hmm. But it's like that that seed that that quote unquote little thing can grow into this big big tree forest maybe of change and i i do think that disrupting education as we're as we're talking to thought leaders and experts in the field who are deep in the work in investing in change i mean you don't go on a 80 a minimum of 80 speaking events a year and aren't disrupting education i i like i don't think people understand like that's a lot of work Mark does not have to, he did not have to podcast with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he did. Uh, he does not have to go to all of these places and travel and like share this message. He is so like, it, it. it's part of his purpose. It is, he can't untie him. He has a clear why he wants to wake up and do this work. And like to his point at the beginning of the podcast, it's like, if you think someone's wasting their time and you think they should be doing something different, but they're not like you haven't gotten them interested, mm -hmm. right? Like, uh, Mark is deeply invested in young people and he believes that that can really change education. If we better understand our audience, I agree with him. There's so many different ways to tackle disrupting education, but we can't forget those in the seats across from us or whoever we're conversing with like this pool of you know trusted respected um networks 
is something that I'm taking away. Like there's so much power is like educators, like on the front lines that you have to disrupt education. Like if I'm listening to this series and I'm in the classroom, I'm feeling so empowered right now mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. all of the guests, even though none of them are, are frontline day in teachers, they are giving nuggets that educators and school leaders and community members can, can, implement right now immediately after listening to this podcast you can do things that may not like in the past have seemed disruptive but they really do make a change and so for me it's like this series this is like uncovering all these like golden nuggets of like ways that you can really disrupt education and it's not a bomb like i think mm -hmm. for me i really thought and as we continue to podcast that disrupting education had to be this big ginormous thing. And I was like, we're going to find it, Peter. Like mm -hmm. it's, we're going to find that one <laughs> thing. And like, I, I got into this like illusion that like, it was just, it, there was this one thing and it's really, I'm, I'm this phrase that it's taking on a new meaning. It's like, well, how do you eat an elephant? Well, one bite at a time. And yeah. how do you disrupt education? It's like literally one bite at a time. And, all of those bites, so to speak, are important. And even if you're really just all in on one, you can disrupt education. We're mm -hmm. not saying like, oh, now you need to do all of these things that all of the guests over the 350 plus episodes that are uh, like that you could listen to for years on this podcast. No, it's like there are nuggets in each one and finding one in, in, and really going in all in on that one can revolutionize education and disrupt it, which is exciting to be in this moment in the podcast. Like, it's just like, a, it's my, it's my own paradigm shift. Right. Um, you know, I think like rounding this out, it, it really is. I mean, listening to all these uh, amazing educators and speakers is, has, I mean, I'm sitting here and, and for those who are watching, that's, I always keep a notebook uh, by, and I'm always writing down notes I have. Yep, see, a whole bunch of them. Um, and you can do that too. And you can do it at any time. Um, it really is about making moves um, and understanding the power that everybody has um, to change lives. Um, you know, there was some bad news today. And I kind of end on this in, in our in our school. You know, there, there was some administrative moves and things like that, that no one, you know, when you make a change or something like that, it, you, you're never going to uh, make everybody happy. It's a difficult job. I've been in the administrative side. It is difficult. However, in the conversations that we were having uh, amongst, you know, admin and teachers and, you know, getting together, um, the common theme was, you know, well, what you always have to go back to why you got into education. And, mm -hmm. and that kind of alludes to, you know, Mark's book. Um, and we've been talking about why a lot and, and what can we do to just do something slightly better the next day with the audience that we have. And, and, that's there's a lot of different things and we've been getting that just like you said across this series um and i truly believe it i mean it, it really eased the pain for many in that decision that was made um because let's just get back to reality i mean you know things are going to happen changes are going to happen they're out of our control um but the you know mark uh just last week had those just small things, you know, that you can do, you can start to understand Gen Z more, or the alphas, depending on where you're teaching, um, you know, going back through our guests, there's so many of those nuggets, like you're saying. So that's what we really want to, uh, you know, have our audience take away and, and have just nuggets of things. And you're right, Ali, when it's funny, because while you were saying when you started, uh, you know, with me here, um, actually years ago, that was my start. I was like, I'm going to change it and I'm going to do it. And it's just going to be this big, huge flash of boom, it's changed. And um, it's a humbling, humbling thing to understand that. I mean, you know, you know, the old saying, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon yet. Um, you know, take, take a moment to look around the environment while you're running that marathon because it's, it's a beautiful thing. So final thoughts, Allie. 
Wow, that's a great uh, visual to end with as a marathon runner, you know, like the training can be like really arduous and you're just pounding miles and you're like, oh, I'm, uh, I have to run this far and it's, you know, why am I doing this stupid race? What is it all for? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the real treat of that hard work is the race if you know like the running of the miles and taking it in right like if you're just like doing something uh running you know running just to run to check the box like you're not you know on the treadmill headphones in you're you're just like consuming but you're not really taking anything in you're i get it i like i no like we've been there but mm -hmm. If you're like in a headspace to like really look around and and take in the environment and really just enjoy the race and go really deep into the work like our guests are are doing, you're going to find so much passion and in your life. Like, I mean, all of all of our guests are, are super passionate about what they do. And it's like because they have a clear purpose and they've answered like some deep whys and none of them I do want to point out as a final thought figured it out immediately after high school mm -hmm. so it, it it you're not too late and no. <laughs> so whoever is listening to this like um and you don't have to put that you know on a young person either like let them explore and tinker and try and and get their passion wherever they're at and like let it just move the needle forward let them enjoy this marathon of life with it, rather than just like just run run the miles and don't look at anything and have no fun um take in the beautiful like world around you and i think that's just like a good visual to kind of end this podcast mm -hmm. on and get ready for our our next guest yep. and more people who are deep into the work um investing in disrupting education that's i'm just loving this series and i'm looking forward for right. the next week um and just a, a quick note on the end of that um for for real like doors are opening for Allie and i um because we are going deep into the series and we, we're very intentional i mean you know i mean we you know this is uh this is not an easy thing to do a lot of podcasts like we do um and i'm not going to sit here and try to pat myself on the back but i i'm just using that as an example of you know, the deeper you go and the more people that you connect with, which was one of Mark's biggest things like connections, um, really, it, it opens doors, it opens doors. So um, hopefully you're finding this series uh, great. Um, and you always can go back and check out all our guests. We obviously have more coming up. Um, so I'm super excited. Never give away things too early, except for Ali's name hasn't changed quite yet. So <laughs> that time it comes out. I don't know. Sometimes soon. <laughs> you never know. All right. Well, thank you all for listening. Uh, be here. Be sure to hit that uh, subscribe button, uh, like us and uh, share it out for real. Um, we can make some changes in education, disrupt it in a good way. Um, and we're going to keep going. Um, and hopefully you're, you're finding something bright uh, in the difficult job of education, parenting, being a student, wherever you're at in your learning journey. Thank you so much for Ali Privet. I'm Peter Hostrosser. We'll catch you next time on the Disrupt Education Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode of the Disrupt Education Podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Are you ready to disrupt the educational arena you're a part of? For more ways to get involved in the work we do here at Disrupt Education, check us out at disrupteducation.co or find us on LinkedIn at Peter Hostrosser or Ali Privet. Our mission here is to help facilitate and amplify changes in the educational system through local initiatives and help you scale them into community movements. Our building network of disruptors in education are working to move beyond scores and grades as the only measure for student learning. If your school district, college, campus, or organization is looking for facilitators of this work, reach out on our website or social media. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on this week's episode or any episode, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep pushing the boundaries, taking risks, and most importantly, disrupting education.